In the last couple of years, game developers have abandoned the idea of DLCs or expansions and moved their games into the live service era and obviously that's really bad and it's one of the reasons as to why games like 2042 or Anthem for example came out in such a bad state. So what is a live service game? A live service game is a game that's designed to keep people engaged so they can play it for as long as possible. So instead of making game A for example, releasing 4 DLCs for it over the first 12 months of the game's life and then moving on to game B, they make game A and then they add content for years to come. But how do they keep players engaged for as long as possible? Here is where seasons come in play. A new season pretty much means a new reason to come back to the game. Each season introduces a new season pass with daily and weekly missions and with a bunch of things to unlock and go after. Live service games also tend to release new content through those new seasons for free. In 2042, for example, we got a new map, two new guns, one new vehicle and one new gadget for free. However, even though the new playable content is free, as we just said, everything else in the season pass is behind a paywall. That paywall, of course, is the season pass purchase, which most games ask for about 10 with 15 euros. At the same time, because the new content is free, games add in-game stores with a bunch of microtransactions so in case people don't purchase the season pass they can get tricked into purchasing something else or maybe people get the season pass and then they get microtransactions as well for cosmetics and things like that and even though this model on paper sounds better than having to pay 15 or 20 euros every three months for new content or for a new dlc like we did back in battle 3 or battle 4 when there is room for gaming companies to make extra money with less effort, I think we can all agree that from a business perspective is the smart thing to do and what most of those companies are doing. And there are two big issues with live service games. So what they're doing is first of all they try to keep the players engaged with the game for as long as possible, not through a fun process for the player but by having him to do daily and weekly chores which most of the times are boring and stupid. That's not the big issue however, if you don't like the weekly missions you don't do them. The big issue is regarding the content and to be more precise the lack of it. There is a pattern with most of games coming out the last few years and that's pretty much games releasing in a state that's not even close to being polished and ready for them to come out. However, they release them anyways and then proceed into completing them if you wish through that live service and through those seasons that we just talked about. In the case of Bat 2042 for example, let's remove all the bugs, all the issues that need to be fixed and let's just look at the game with the content that it came out with. 2042 came out with 7 maps and 22 weapons. And somebody who hadn't played any previous titles might think well that's not that bad. Well Battlefield 4, almost a decade ago, came out with 10 maps and with 67 weapons not including the pistols. 7 months later now, 2042 has received a brand new map, 2 new weapons and 1 new vehicle as well as 1 new gadget and Battlefield 4 7 months after its release had received 3 new DLCs which all together included 12 new maps, 15 new weapons, 3 new gadgets, 3 new vehicles and 3 new game modes. The counter argument of course for those who will try to defend 2042 here is that 2042 had to delay season 1 because they had to fix a game and if you thought of saying that you just proved my point. The games nowadays released in a state that it's not even close to being acceptable. Battlefield 4 came out broken as well however when it came to the content it had a lot more of it and when it came to the state of the game even though it had a lot of issues it still was a much better game than 2042 and that's why players kept playing it. But let's say for the sake of the argument that 2042 didn't have to delay season 1 and by now it has received 2 seasons. It would still not come close to the amount of content Battlefield 4 had in the same time period. 
The answer to why games back then got so much more content is very simple. Games back then made money through the DLC purchases, of course, after the initial purchase of the game. We had no cosmetic shops, we had no microtransactions, so if DICE wanted to make money, they had to come out with DLCs that would actually worth the 15 or 20 euros. Imagine a trailer for season 1 of 2042 as a DLC. Imagine the trailer. One new map, two new weapons, one new gadget, one new vehicle. Now, only for 15 euros. Nobody will buy that. Companies had to earn their money back with the DLC system. They had to convince the players to buy the DLCs. Now, they don't have to do that. They can put out as little content as they want. All they have to do in order to make money is fill their in-game store with microtransactions, with skins, with this, with that, and people will buy it. Diablo Immortal came to PC a couple of weeks ago and made in two weeks 24 million dollars from the purchases, from the in-game store, from the pay-to-win system. People don't care if the microtransactions and if the in-game stores are ethical, are right or whatever. They will buy it anyways. It's funny to me when I see content creators defending live service games and talking about how bad the premium edition was for Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 1. If you don't know what premium was, pretty much you paid 50 euros for, for the premium package that allowed you to have access to every single DLC the game would release in the future. And even though it would split the player base, to those who had the DLC and those who didn't have the DLC, the end results were much better than what we're getting now and those 50 euros were worth it. Meanwhile, people like me who bought the gold edition of 2042 will never get our money's worth. I will never get the extra 40 euros that I paid. There is just no way I will. A live service game pretty much means that it will release with 70% of its content and then over the period of one or two years, the devs will add the other 30% claiming to be adding new content, when in reality they're adding things that should have been in the game since day one, or at least they're getting their game to a point, to the point that it should be when it, would, when it was released. 2042 will have by the end of its life about 35 weapons, and that's me being generous. We may not even get 30. We will see. And about 10 maps, I'm guessing. Right? One map each season. In what world is that amount of content even acceptable? And we're sitting here covering Battlefield 2042 news, making dumb videos about the next patch, which will include a game-breaking scoreboard to the game and a city voice chat will come another month later and we're begging for a fucking squad system and platoons or a fucking player stats page while DICE developers are posting on Twitter how proud they are about 2042, how brutal the players expectations are and all the reasons the game is in its state it is. And I still haven't heard a single apology by those fucking people. They still haven't admitted that we fucked up and we released something that it's not even close to being acceptable. I'm tired of having to make those videos and I, I'm not saying that I don't want to make them. I want to make videos because it's what I enjoy doing. But I'm tired of trying to find something worth the, the, the time to make a video about it. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of making videos talking about the new 120 bug fixes that we will see in 2042 in one week from now and I'm tired of, of, of waiting 8 months for season 1 so I can make a video and say here is the new content. One new map, two new weapons, one new gadget. That's it. Go fuck yourself. Like. How is that even acceptable? Give me a fucking break. And I'm not saying that live service games cannot be successful. The model of live service, as I said, sounds pretty good in paper. But in order for it to turn like that in reality, the people behind the game have to actually give a damn about the game and the fan base. And sadly, the gaming industry, it's not what it used to be. Investors want profits and they don't care if the player base is happy with their game or, or, or not. And it's not like the good old days that people made games because they wanted to share their passion and their dreams and their visions with other players and enjoy it all together. And, and that's really our fault. 
to a degree because we keep on buying those serious games and supporting them and i'm getting very frustrated and heated right now for the very simple reason that this new generation of, of, of gamers of people think that this is okay you see those people all over internet twitter reddit uh in in, in game in bar 2042 chat that claim that the game is fine and and, and the content is great and we're being too harsh with it and those people are saying this because most likely they haven't experienced what an actual good game being supported looks like they haven't experienced new content being added to the game and that new content actually being good enough they haven't experienced battle 3 they haven't experienced battle 4 and it's the new generation that's coming up that will grow with games like 2042 or with games like battle 5 and and games that keep on failing their communities and they'll and they will think that this is the norm well it's not the norm and i'm seeing my little cousin he's 12 and his brother is fucking nine and they're playing their city mobile games and they think that it's okay to have a million microtransactions and a million cosmetics in the in-game shop and they think listen to this they think that it's normal for games to have paid to win they think that it's normal that the player who pays money can kick your ass and of course i'm talking about the whole jump that's been going around with diablo immortal which has this huge paid to win system in it and you have those MOBA gamers defending that shit of course you can play the game and not pay a fucking penny but look at what the gaming industry is actually heading into anyways that's all that I had to say live service could be fucking brilliant if it was done by people who actually gave a damn about the game and the fan base and the community but as long as live services are being used from companies who just want to make as much profit with as little work as possible then the games that we're getting will keep get worse and worse and worse and our money will get us less and less content so yeah sorry for that little explosion earlier I i'm gonna leave that in there i'm not gonna edit it out i hope that you enjoy the video please make sure to leave a comment down below let me know your thoughts about it do you like the live service do you prefer the way things were back with the premium Share your thoughts with me. If you enjoy the content on my channel and you want to support me, please make sure to drop a like and to subscribe. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Bye-bye.